Fox Fawn taking advantage of the opportunity in very, very close fashion, which earns her the winner's finals against Goober 707. You know, I think what gave Rari the energy to take down Mystery and put him into loser's bracket was the idea that she would have had to fight John Numbers and Losers. This is something she does every single Tuesday, not on a Wednesday if she can avoid it. <laughs> yeah, I think the <laughs> Numbers and Losers is the like the demon on your shoulder. It's like, who wants to encounter and look to the left and think, oh man, I gotta talk to him today. Oh, well, it's also, one? oh my God. It's also a player that Rari has played just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. If you go oh, on like yeah. PG stats, it's like 500 games. That's a ton. <laughs> and she has the losing <laughs> record. No one has played John Numbers more than Fawn. She doesn't want it anymore. Yeah, it's... <laughs> It's not not something that anybody's interested in on a Wednesday. So Goober 707 is certainly a welcome change and a welcome first stock there for the Gimmer here. Let's see if she's able to ride this momentum in the best of three. But we've seen what Goober can do against uh, slower playstyles and slower pacings with a win on John and a win on Melly already through this bracket. Well, the nice thing here is that Goober doesn't have to contend with that big whip and these crazy setups at ledge. There's a way, there's this room what? to breathe now. Yeah, I guess do you have much more immediate control of space, mm -hmm. but then you've got Fawn trying for drag down up there. Instead, you just get the chase of the platform. Oh my. Fawn just kind of in control based purely on like a full awareness of, of spacing and how long it takes for every individual trap, every gunman shot, all the different gunmen, which way can is going, and as I say that, she runs straight into her own can. Feels good. <laughs> oh my gosh. Goober on the back foot once more. Braria 148, but still maintaining great control in the driver's seat the whole time. She's not turning this car around. No, no, She's driving we... it straight off the cliff and diving out before Goober can even realize what's happening. We're playing on these platforms too. Like we're not letting Goober put, uh, any quarter when it comes to what he can do. He's got to make plays like that in order to try and intercept and catch Fawn at any given moment. Brute forcing can only work so far though. Exactly. Like how many times are you going to have that Hail Mary read and that Hail Mary play before you're stuck in a situation like this? Yeah, you're on the same stock, but 160 to 20 is a little bit less desirable. <laughs> Use this rage to your advantage. Ooh. Until you can't. Frame one can, everybody. Sometimes it just gets you out of jail free. Thank you, Sakurai. You're the best. Play tested every character with your own two hands. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly one of the games of all time, and definitely a good one for sure. But either way, there's just a lot to a lot to keep track of both in game and across the entirety of the metagame. Back there. Oh, got sent outwards instead of inwards, so you couldn't find an upper. Let's try it again. <laughs> And this is what's actually put people in really bad positions against Rari is whenever they air dodge back onto the stage or onto the platform, she is always ready for that with a grab or a disjoint. We finally get another bomb. She's not falling for that smoke screen though. No, none of the visual noise is gonna really bother Fawn because she's used to having such a clutter. What? Yeah. It was the tether! Mm-hmm. She just held it down there. I've never seen a tether grab be punished like that. She's so aware. She's just so fully aware of all of these different tools to the point where, yeah, like nothing is going to really find... She's not going to find anything all that surprising like so. Like, look. That look at the bounce now, of the can. That was perfect. That was 100% even calculated. That was even an instant tether, too. Toon Link did not linger and did not dangle grappled straight to ledge, but because of the way that that animation goes, where you go down and then into ledge, the can was right there. Just, it, it's so hard to cover everything about what Fawn does at any given moment, because she's always moving on to the next trap, always spawning another item, always playing around uh, the game state that which her opponent puts her in in order to make the most effective use of all of these different unique attributes. 
But Goobers is having a good time chasing down this dog this time. Yeah, really trying to press, press and pressure. Oh my god. Oh, it's okay. He's he's fresh. He's, he's pretty fresh. He's pretty fresh. Just just look at those eyes. Big fresh. This is a big lead as well. Another up out of shield. Goobers just had enough of any sort of individual traps. We are saying, shut it all down. Press that up out of shield. Press these reversal options. Get things out of my face. Yeah, I took down John Numbers, and I can take down you too. Okay. That's, it certainly means something going into each one of these games because it shows you have the patience and adaptability. And in long games against weird characters like Wii Fit, like Duck Hunt, uh, patience and adaptability are traits that you wouldn't give up for anything. But I will say, if I'm John over there in the audience watching this match go on right now, I'm praying that Goober actually takes it. It's like, yeah. To get the I run back. Exactly. Oh, no, no not, not to not get the run back. To play so, against Fawn? To play against Fawn. <laughs> it's like, I can take Fawn, but yeah. I don't know if I can take this Toon Link. Nah, John's ever the confident fellow. I'm, as are so many players in this top eight. The back of Goober in such control right now. Look, to get this far into a Zeno, Bozo. you have to be confident. It's all about that mindset at a certain point. Bozo. This is the type of situation. Wow, he hit by the ping, but not the can. That's tough. Unfortunately, you see a little bit of snack back there from Rari actually misdirecting the gunman. Unsure if they have that fix on their controller yet. Hopefully soon. Wow, the forward, the back air, they're even not taking it. Super tough on the part of Fawn here. Just oh, that's a dead. Nope. Oh, that's right. No kill throw. No kill throws. Everything's a setup for a duck hunt. Uh, trying to bounce it in between the the dog, the duck, and the gunman, and the the invisible gunman, the can, all, everything in between. It's overwhelming. Yeah. You're trying to play five five characters. Kind of. <laughs> yeah, Icy's got nothing on this character. Ooh, Rari actually trying to call out another instant tether. It's a really nice patience there from Goober to just wait. Yeah. Oh, that fast fall was from Fawn was so nice. Goober slowly losing a lot of control after that first stock was taken. But if there was anything we saw from that first stock, it's percentage of uh, where stock is taken. And that average needs to heavily favor uh, Goober if they want to keep control over this game. Force Fawn to beat you at 170 every single stock. At this point, you just have Chop. to wear her down. Two and four tilt's hilarious. Great move and funny move. In another <laughs> life, Toon Link was a lumberjack. In this life, he's a lumberjack. <laughs> he's Aww. taking down trees left and right and taking out dogs, too, with that back throw, catching the air dodge in. Big opportunity for Fawn or to try and even up this game going into the final stock of game number three. However, oh, the hook shot not actually destroying the clay pigeon. That thing's pretty indestructible. Looks good. Made a metal. You're gonna need a shotgun oh. to break that. Got a couple of them in the case of Duck Hunt. I'm just going for the simple rifle though. On that clay pigeon, uh, on that gunman, the forward tilt forcing off stage. Will Fawn go for an edge guard? No, she will not. Respecting the bomb play coming out from Goober. Yeah, she does not need to overextend. Just keep it simple. Keep it simple, stupid. The kiss method. Just toss the can at him. Hit it with that forward tilt. Mwah. Nothing too crazy in that moment, and a huge stock do take in said moment, because only 33%, you're very much in this final game without having to climb a mountain. Instead, you're already at the molehill. You mean the summit? No, it's like a mountain in molehill. Like, oh, know. yeah. I do like mixing metaphors. <laughs> it's fun. It's, it's, a, it's a metaphor salad. English is a funny language. It's great. Honestly, <laughs> any, any combination of two words, salad. <laughs> yummy, yummy. <laughs> Fruit salad. Did you know that Shakespeare was the one who invented the word salad? Really? Yeah. What? He invented a lot of words. I c you know, I can believe that. Like, that he had a, he had a very verbose dictionary. And then when he just didn't have a word, he's like, I'm just going to make one I'm up. I'm just going to make it up. <laughs> this will catch on in 100 years. Honestly, iconic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to play by my own rules. 
not too dissimilar to many of these players that we have seen tonight, just trying to enforce their own game plans. Up throw, no forward throw, just barely whiffing on the arc from the can there. Oh no, oh. trying to challenge the can and lost the set for it. No, 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 can't do that. Oh my God, bro. Unless you're hitting can directly, cannot do that. Man, and you know what? Fawn's giving some good advice there. Goober's like, oh man, I didn't know what to do at some point. Goober's a well-studied player. He, They spend a ton of time just like talking about the game. Every time I see them that, uh, at a, whether it be a local or regional or what have you, they play a ton of friendlies. Like, they play the game a lot at events. 